Alright, I've got some extra shop time today, so I figured I would do something with my new table. Something to uh, to get it off the ground, build a little stand. I, I like the sawhorses, putting them up there, but it's just a tad too high, sitting on the ground, it's a tad too low. Uh, I want to keep it about, about 36, 37 inches, which is the height of my table. That's a comfortable height working for me. So, I'm going to build a little stand to go below it. Um, Obviously, it needs to be mobile, so I'm going to do two swivel casters, two uh, straight casters, and hopefully do a locking mechanism on the straight casters. So, I don't have anything designed, anything in SketchUp. I just kind of have a, a need for a box with wheels on the bottom of it, basically. So, I don't know where I'm going to go with this. So, I've got a basic design uh, thought out, roughly. Uh, I love my dry erase board, by the way. This is basically what I do with most of my projects. I know my total height is 36 and a half, and the distance from the ground to the top of the casters is 2 and a half inches. My bench top router table uh, is 15 and a half inches. That leaves 18 and a half inches for my stand. Um, on a front view, it's basically just going to be a box with some dimensional pine. I'm going to utilize half lap joints. Uh, with the weight supported all the way through the sides. Uh, the side pieces, half lap joints as well, 18 inches uh, 18 inches in depth. This is not drawn to scale, obviously. Um, 18 inches from the front to the back, and then 18 and a half inches tall. That is really not drawn to scale. Anyway, uh, half lap joints to glue it all together. Um, I haven't been using my, my dado blade much at all in my table saw. And uh, I want some good practice on that, so what better uh, time to use it than on shop furniture. Like always, I'm going to use this 2 by dimensional pine scraps. Uh, I'm going to cut them down into 3 inch length, uh, widths. I've determined that to be the width of my structural members. And I can get 1, 2, 3, 4 of the 32 inch length pieces out of this one. And then I've got some 2 by 10 cutoffs that uh, I'm excited to use because these have been sitting around for a while waiting for a purpose. So, one, two, three, four of the 18 and a half, one, two, three, four of the 18 inches. And that should be uh, the skeleton structure uh, ready to be dadoed and put together. Got all my pieces cut to final length for the uh, uh, for the frame, and I've done some test fitting on my dado blade for the height to get it to where these are on the same plane with a simple half lap joint here. And now I just need to start making all of my rabbits. Next, I need to take a piece of my width. I need to take a piece of my material that is the same width of what I'm using and make sure that I am flush so that I remove enough material for the next 90 degree piece to be half lap right in place. I want to show you guys something real quick. I've been cutting all these 
uh, half laps with the dado blade instead of like a 10 inning jig just because I want my shoulder here I want this to be perfectly parallel to this surface and the way, way my 10 inning jig is it's kind of kind of iffy so I don't like to use it on nice joinery uh, my version of nice joinery um, but anyway this thing is throwing sawdust obviously it's a dado head it's a dado blade set in the table saw but I wanted to show you how well my makeshift dust collection was working. Um, that that was nowhere near full. I obviously made a bunch of sawdust, but that's how much just adding this little piece of pipe helps. So that is really cool. Obviously this is from some other projects as well, but man that got full in a hurry. So there's an entire uh, trash can full of sawdust that I do not have to sweep up. A little bit on the floor, but but yeah, uh, lots of sawdust here. Got my 18 and a half vertical piece, 18 and a half vertical piece, 18 horizontal. That will sit in like so, and then this 18 inch horizontal piece, like so. These boards are three inches wide obviously an inch and a half thick so that is a lot of glue surface to make that joint nice and strong uh... the reason i chose the lap joint is because they are extremely easy to make and also because um, one of the major woodworking publications i don't remember the name uh... someone help me out here Pub uh, popular woodworking woodworkers journal i'm not exactly sure uh... they made several 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 different types of joints um, Spline miters, dominoes, uh, dowels, biscuits, half lap, uh, you know, several different types of joints, and, and they sent them off to have them broken and tested. And lo and behold, the half lap joint uh, was the strongest. So, easy, strength, not worried about cosmetics, although it doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, that's how I'm going to do this. Uh, obviously, I'm just going to clamp it. Uh, I'm not going to clamp it, I'm going to glue it. Excuse me, I'm not going to use any clamps. What I'm going to do is away from the bottom and top edge uh, by, I don't know, obviously a little bit more than three quarters. Uh, this is how much area I have to work with. I'm just going to put a series of screws in each one. The screws will hold a mechanical joint, uh, will act as a mechanical joint, and also uh, they will be the clamps while this stuff glue dries. The reason I'm staying away from this edge is because once I get the side panels done, I'm going to stand this up and put it back through the uh, dado cutter and I'm going to remove a little bit of material like so, so I can create another half lap for the rails that are going to go this way. So, uh, keeping the screws above it and basically just making a sturdy skeleton box. I wanted to point out a little mistake I made. I got ahead of myself. Um, this is shop furniture, so it doesn't really matter. But I got ahead of myself, and I screwed these in in the wrong orientation. Uh, like I said, I'm going to remove some of this, so I do not need a screw there. Uh, no big deal. Just remove it and put it to the next one. I did this whole did this whole frame in the same way using this triangle method pattern when I should have used this triangle pattern. So, not the end of the world but I am human and that may even come out so you may not even see that. With all my pieces cut, uh, you start to see how this thing is going to take shape. Uh, half lap joints down here at the bottom. The back side is where we screwed it together. Cut out the notch. That we set in place and glued, and then uh, these two top pieces will go in like so. Glued and screwed, and then that will be the basis of this box. With the bottom side up, I can start mounting my casters. Uh, in this instance, it doesn't matter if it's top or bottom or whatnot. But on one side, I'm going to use two uh, straight 
straight directional casters, and the other side I'm going to use two uh, swivel casters. Now the locking, excuse me, the locking mechanism that I'm going to use, or build I should say, uh, is one that I saw off, uh, I think it was Ronald Walter's uh, YouTube channel, his miter saw stand. Uh, I'll find it and post the link in the description below. But basically what it is, is he had a straight piece of wood that is on the back side of these wheels. And he had a star knob right here that tightened up this piece of wood into this direction and moved the entire piece into the wheel. So you had your your mounting bracket mounting piece for the star knob that tightened it up that slid a piece of wood engaging these wheels. So you lock the wheels in place and you're not going to move any. So between that and also having these on the right hand side of the router with the feed direction going this way these wheels should be locked I shouldn't have any swivel and uh, I'll get to more of the build in just a minute alright I didn't really record any of this build for the locking mechanism for the wheels simply because I didn't know if it was going to work out um, come to find out it does work but I need a longer carriage bolt I've got a three and a half inch in there and I need a four inch so my tolerances are pretty tight right now um, basically, in its loose position, these wheels spin fine, and all we're doing is there's a there's a nut buried in some of this walnut, and it's all screwed into this piece of poplar. Uh, this piece of poplar here, here, uh, once turned upside down, gravity will be going this way, stops uh, this whole assembly from falling to the ground when loosened. Um, but anyway, if I tighten it up which I can do by hand from above, just reaching down. It's nice and tight. And it clamps this piece of board against both of these solid wheels. So this is all snug. These wheels become legs and nothing is moved. Now if I loosen this back up, like I said, I need a longer bolt. But the wheels spin just fine. Um, I don't know, maybe if I get enough interest, I'll make a video on how to make one of these. Uh, but, you know, it's it's really nothing to it. So, let's flip it upside down, put the uh, bench on it, the, uh, I'm sorry, the router table on it, and uh, see where we're at. Well, there's the new uh, router table stand. Like I said, not much to it. Uh, I may put some shelves on the bottom, I may close it in, I don't know. But for right now, it's at a work, uh, comfortable working height for me. You know, it, it rolls around just fine. The locking mechanism. Just screw this down to tighten up against these wheels. And it's not going anywhere. Loosen it up. It rolls just fine. Tighten it down. Uh, you know, the only cost was about six bucks for my about six bucks for my casters. Everything else I had, the router table I had, obviously from Trash to Treasure. Uh, other than that, very functional, very cool, and I will get a lot of good use out of it. 